Today we're going to prove two fundamental facts in number theory. The first one is that every pair of positive integers m and n has a greatest common divisor. And the second one, for a pair m and n positive integers, there exist integers x, y. Here x, y could be positive or negative, such that mx plus ny equal to greatest common divisor of m and n. All right, these two are related. The proof is the same. All right, let's go. Here, we consider what is called linear combination of m and n. That is, mx plus ny or xy are integers. Okay, we take the positive value of it. All right, so the linear combination x and y could be negative, so this value could be negative, but we ignore that. We take the positive values and we call the set x. Now we claim that x is non empty. Why? Because x, y can just be 1, right? So m plus n is going to be greater than 0, so it has at least one element. Now we're going to use what is called well ordering principle for non-empty set of natural numbers, right? So the well ordering principle says if the set of natural numbers has at least one element, it's non-empty, then it must have a least element. Alright, so in this case, the set X is well defined and we're going to have a least element. Let's call it a D. Okay, D is inside X and it has least value. Alright, in other words, there exists an element in X that is least element. We call D. D, of course, is also a positive linear combination of M and N. Yeah, for some S and T, where S and T are integers, could be negative, by the way. Okay, so how we're going to prove D is indeed the GCD, right? So we're going to claim this. In order to prove this claim, you need, of course, justify that D must divide M and N, right? The first thing you need to prove is that D is a divisor of M and a divisor of N. Now, in order to prove it is the greatest common divisor, so you have to prove that for any other factor Q, you must have the Q device D. Alright, so if you can prove these two statements, then you know that D, which is the least element of set X, is going to be the GCD. Alright, so let's go prove these two facts. In order to prove D device by M, we can assume you know when you divide d and you may have a remainder right so in other words we're going to express m in terms of d times a quotient plus a remainder so in other words let's assume m equal q times d quotient plus r this r is less than d right so r is greater or equal to zero so we need to prove that r is zero, you know, so that d is indeed a factor of m, right? So how do we go about that? Now notice, however, from this expression here, we can express r in terms of m and n. Okay, so let's do that. So first of all, m is indeed in the set x. Right, because m is actually a linear combination of uh, coefficient one and zero here. All right, so r, you re we're going to replace d here because d is an element of x. Earlier we said that d equal m s plus n t, so we can just plug in for the d value, and we're going to combine m and n here. So it's m times some integer here n times another integer. So in other words, if r is a positive, then r would be belong to x. Right? 
So if R is positive, then by definition, R is going to be a linear combination, and it has a positive value, so it's going to be in X. But that would be a contradiction because we know that R is smaller than D. In the meantime, D is the least element. That is contradiction right there, right? So it cannot be true for both cases here. So which implies R has to be zero because in other words, D is indeed a factor of N. Now use similar argument, you can say D is the divisor of N, right? So D is indeed a common divisor. In order to prove that D is the greatest common divisor, you have to prove the second fact. In other words, if Q is a common divisor, then Q must divide D. Now this proof would be straightforward because what is D? D is a linear combination of M and N. So if Q divides N, Q divides N, Q of course divides a linear combination of M and N. All right, so Q divides by, uh, divides N, divides N, and D is a linear combination of M and N, so Q divides D. So we're done. So since we have proven the two facts. Now we know that indeed by the construction of X, by the web ordering principle, the least element we claim that it is GCD. So we prove by construction. Okay. So in other words, we have proved the fact that every pair of positive integers MN must have a greatest common divisor because we have shown how we construct that. Now by the same argument, we prove the second useful fact, that is, for M and N, the GCD must be an inner combination of M and N. In other words, in the earlier we say there is some S and T, so the M, X plus N, T, in an inner combination, that's the greatest common divisor, right? So that's exactly what we did in the proof process. So this is two in some textbooks, that's going to be two different theorems, but in our case, the proof is the same. Okay, so from the second fact, we also know that GCD is going to be the least element of all possible linear combination of MN. Okay, so here, when, of course, this is probably not well de defined here. If, if linear combination meaning MX plus NY, where the value is positive, right? Now, XY, however, can be negative, right? So what, what we're doing by constructing that GCD is the least element of the set X in our construction. All right. So hope you enjoy the video. Please like and share.